You're watching Living Local 15. From farm fresh produce, corn mazes, pumpkin picking, and more, I'm taking you inside of Kurt's Produce today. Come on. Joining me now is Matt and Ralph, who is the owner and manager of Kurt's Produce, this historic pumpkin patch. And you guys have been here for over 150 years? Yeah, actually this year is the 150th anniversary. Um, so yeah. That is so incredible. Welcome. It's so great to talk with you. Yeah, yeah so tell us about the history of the pumpkin patch. Yeah, I think Ralph can Okay. Um, the way the story goes is my father, George, farmed with his two brothers, Tom and John, and they had a little half acre pumpkin patch. Mm -hmm. And that was Christmas for the three families. <laughs> so if we had a good pumpkin year, we had a good Christmas. Okay. And if it wasn't such a good pumpkin year, Christmas was a little thinner. Mm -hmm. And then um, when I was in seventh grade, I took it over as a FFA project mm -hmm. and ran it through high school. And uh, then after, um, after, I graduated and stuff, we, it, it continued to grow. And then um, after Matt got back from Purdue, he kind of took over the management of the, the produce side of things. Okay, and this is a sixth generation family owned business and you're the sixth. Yep. So share with us about what people can experience when they come out here. Um, yeah, so we have a lot of pumpkins to choose from, a mm -hmm. lot of different shapes, colors, uh, sizes. Um, we about have every type of pumpkin you can imagine. And then um, on the weekends, we have a corn maze and you pick pumpkin patch where you can actually go out to the field and see where they're grown, see the vines, um, and, and see how big it is and to the area uh, to grow all those pumpkins. And then, uh, and then we have a wagon ride to get back and out of the field. And yeah, that's what we do on the weekends. Yeah, and it's just, I mean, so colorful here as you look around you can see the different options people can come and purchase the different sizes and so let's take a walk back here so this caught my attention when i was first driving up i'm like whoa these are mega pumpkins and i've never seen them this size so can you share with us how do you grow pumpkins this huge well for these pumpkins it's all about the seed uh -huh. um they are uh uh, bred to be this big and so years of the seed companies breeding them um, they have a nice uh, kind of uniform shape and size and color pumpkin mm -hmm. and these are actually called prize winners most of these we have a few jack-o-lanterns mixed in with it mm -hmm. um, but oh probably 75 to maybe 125 up to maybe 150 pounds uh, you're looking at for this range right here Okay, and I have never seen a pumpkin this big, but then when I had turned, I said, there's no way that those pumpkins can be real. So can we walk over here? Yeah. So are these pumpkins real? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay, they are breeding pumpkins for Cinderella's wagon because this pumpkin is so big and it's real. Like how? Look at this. Wow, so you go through the same process and it's intentional to get it this size. Yes, yep, it's all about the seed. And um, yeah, for pumpkins these big, uh, the, the seed's kind of expensive and you have to know where to look to get it. Yeah. It's not just uh, <laughs> straight out of the catalog or anything like everything mm -hmm. else. Um, but yeah, so these, and they get a little bit of extra care. They'll get some extra fertilizer. Yeah. Um, and it's also important to prune the plants. Uh -huh. You only want one pumpkin per plant that way it's diverting all of its energy into one source. Okay, and this is just a random question. Why is the pumpkin cool? Like it's very, is it to preserve? Like it just has an internally cool temperature. Probably just because it's in the shade right now. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I think that'd probably be why. Yeah. A few years ago we had one, what, 1,400 pounds? Yeah and wow. it developed a bad spot uh -huh. to where we would take it off the stand and put it in our cooler oh. to cool it down and bring it back out on the weekends yeah. to try to preserve it to make it through the whole season. Yes, wow, okay. And, and just what, if someone purchases this huge pumpkin, what do they do with it? Um, they have their the biggest pumpkin <laughs> in the neighborhood kind of thing. And, right. Or they're, they're bragging people who car rights. Who, bragging who rights. carve it and yeah. Yeah. But, um, Okay, awesome. So let's go over to the shed. So what I find fascinating is that when people come, because we've been seeing people drive up. Oh, look, over here we have kids that are taking field trips out here. 
So this is just like family fun. It's a place that people can actually come and purchase their produce, but then you have this little barn filled with flowers and more produce. So tell us about this area. Um, yeah, so inside we have uh, our mini pumpkins, oh. the, the smallest uh, available variety. So cute. You know, a lot of people like those for uh, yes. table toppers and whatnot. Mm -hmm. and Great decoration. And we have large and small Indian corn. Okay. And the so small corn is actually a popcorn, so you can shell it and pop it. Oh, really? Yes. I didn't know people actually ate this corn. I thought it was just for decoration. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that one specifically. The though. little one specifically yeah. is a okay. popcorn. The big one isn't. Yeah. Okay, okay. I was like, wow. And then you have spaghetti squash, which, oh my goodness, I love roasting this in the oven. So I'm definitely going to buy some of these before I leave. And you have acorn squash. Yep. And we have butterkin squash. And oh. what butterkin is actually a, a cross between butternut and pumpkin. Okay. Um, and we're actually out of butternut. We had a, um, due to the flooding one. this summer, we uh -huh. lost that part of the crop. Oh, no. So that's interesting. So um, that that's a good point that you're making, that you lost a part of the crop because mm -hmm. you all actually create and manage your own farm. Yes. Out here. So tell us about what are the uh, products? Um, so in the summer, and it was grown across the road this year, and it rotates every year because um, you need to rotate your crops to uh, to prevent disease buildup and to keep your plants healthy. Oh, okay. Um, so this year we had sweet corn, watermelon, tomatoes, mm -hmm. peppers, onions, a half dozen other things uh, for summer produce. Mm -hmm. um, and that was all grown across the road this year. Mm -hmm. And then we have our pumpkin field in the back this year, uh, right. kind of by the corn maze. Okay, so the corn maze, all right. Well, let's continue exploring. Okay. <laughs> I still can't believe I saw that huge pumpkin. So next week we pumpkin pick and go through the corn maze. We'll be right back. Living Local 15, proudly driven by the Kelly Automotive Group.